Hello, I'm Mr. Bob, and welcome to my Algebra 1 video series. This video covers Chapter 5, Section 3, titled Function Rules, Tables, and Graphs. By the end of this video, you will have reviewed function rules, tables, and graphs. You will start by reviewing the three views of a function, which, as I just stated, are the function rule, the table, and the graph. You will then look at a real-world problem regarding the manufacturing question, and then finish up by addressing some special functions. If you'd like me to cover any of these topics in greater detail, please leave a request in the comments section below. Please subscribe to this channel if you find this video to be helpful. Thank you very much. Okay, before we get started, I'd like to just mention a couple definitions that we're going to be using and thinking of as we go through this presentation. The independent variable, the inputs to a function, are the values of the independent variable. A dependent variable, which is the second one we're talking about here, the dependent variable, right? Well, I'm not going to touch it. The dependent variable are the outputs from a function. And they are course, those are corresponding values to the of the dependent variable, right? And they're associated with the independent variable. So if we have a function, like here in the middle, let me put a, okay, I got that hooked up. So if I have a function right here, I'm just going to make this box a function. On this side are inputs, and on this side are outputs. The independent oops, that ain't how you spell independent. Sorry, that does have a T. Okay, let's go back. N D P E N D E N T. Independent variables are on this side, and the dependent variables are on the output side. Okay, so just just kind of we'll be talking about that as we move on. Okay, okay. Objective one: modeling functions. So you can model functions by using rules which would be a function rule, rules, tables, and graphs. A function rule shows how the variables are related. A table identifies specific input values of the function, and a graph gives you the visual picture of the function outputs, and inputs, actually. So the inputs are the value, values of the independent variable, and the outputs are the corresponding values of the dependent variable. We just spoke about that. So let's look at here in this picture here. It says, it says, graph the independent variable on the horizontal axis. So if you said that the independent variables were 1, 2, and 3, you would graph them here on, I'm going to pick a different color, maybe red, on the x-axis as 1, 2, and 3. Okay, those would be the inputs that we're talking about. And they're they're depicted on the x-axis line. Okay, and the output variables are vertical. The, they're the ones that are associated with the y-axis, which is, again, one, two, three, or whatever the output would be. So the graph, graph the dependent variable on the vertical axis, use the input and output values as ordered pairs to plot the points. Well, here's some ordered pairs right here. Negative three and two, right here, negative three and two. We have one here, 3 and negative 4, which is right here, 3 and negative 4. Over here, we have 0 and negative 1. Okay, so that's 0 and negative 1 right there. Here's 3, 3 and negative 4 down here. And here is negative 3 and positive 2 up there. Okay, you join the points with a line or a smooth curve to give the general picture of the function. So in this case, we're talking about a straight line. This is a linear function that we're talking about, okay, that created this line. Okay. Okay, example one, three views of a function, right? The function rule, the table, and the graph. So model the function rule, and the function rule that they want us to model is y is equal to 1 half x plus 3. So our inputs are all going to be putting, going into, our dependent variables are all going to go into x, 
the independent variable is this y value. So whatever you put in for x, y is associated with that x value, and that's your, going to make your ordered pair. Input is independent, output is dependent, okay? So step one, choose the input values for x and evaluate to find y. So they chose negative four, right here, negative four, okay? Zero and two, zero and two. So what do they do? They put the negative four where the x goes. They put it right in here in the x. So here's the negative four one right here. So it's one half negative four is negative two. And negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So there's the y value. Negative 4 is associated with 1. What does that look like as an ordered pair? Okay. Negative 4, comma, 1. That's an ordered pair. X, Y. X values, Y values, or the independent, dependent. Okay. So that's the picture. That's over here. You see it. Negative 4, comma, 1. That's our ordered pair. So now the next number, 0, goes in where the x was. That's our independent variable. And a half of 0 is 0, plus 3 is plus 3. So now for this one, we get it right here. We get 0, comma, 3. x value, y value, independent versus dependent. Okay? And then finally, they, they chose 2, so we have a 2 goes right here in our equation. So 1 half of 2 is 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. So our y value, our dependent variable, is 4. So it's 2 comma 4 right here. 2 comma 4. If I wrote it, it would be 2 comma 4. Okay. And now look at over here. Here's the graph of that. So we fit these numbers and these units so that it would get, we can pick up our data. We have a negative 4 and a positive 4. So here's a negative 4 over on x and a positive 4 up here on y. So we have to make the graph picture fit, the units, the size and spacing. Okay, so the first one is negative 4, 1. So here's, neg here's negative 4. Maybe I'll change this to a different color. How about if I do this? So here's negative 4 and 1. Up, oh, This is 1 right here, 1. Right there, right? One right there, two right here. So right here, negative four, one. Then the next one is zero on the x-axis, zero, three, one, two, three. Here's this one. And then two, four, so positive two, one, two, and up four, one, two, three, four. And see how they drew a nice straight line through there? This is an equation of a line. 1 half x plus 3 is the equation of a line. Okay, it's a linear function. So, and if we're going to put our ordered pairs associating them, I do this, I would say um, negative 4, comma 1, right here. This one would be 0, comma 4. Oh, excuse me. Oops. No, I'm looking in the wrong. I'm looking at one thing and writing something else. Zero comma three. Excuse me. Zero comma three. And then finally over here, two comma. Two comma four. Okay, that's our ordered pairs. Okay, example one. Check your understanding. If you've worked with me before, uh, you know that at this point I'd like you to pause the video and try this on your own and see what you come up with. And then when you come back, we'll work them together. Um, so it's the same as the previous slide. It's got a, a, a function right here. This is a function rule right there. I'm going to change colors on that. We'll make it red. Here's the function rule. And here's the table and the graph. So. Why don't you go ahead and try this, and when you come back, we'll work it together, okay? Okay, I'm assuming that you've done this on your own, and you're re you've returned. So let's look at the table right now. The table, uh, we've chosen negative 2, 0, and 1 as the inputs, or the independent variable, or the x terms, okay? The function rule that we're going to work with, the x over right here is right here. It's 
f of x equals 3 times x. So whatever you put in for your independent variable x, you're going to multiply it by 3 and add 4. That's the function rule. And then here's your ordered pair over here. So the first time we put in negative 2 for the x, and we're going to get f of x equals 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 4 is negative 2. That's our y value. And the ordered pair is negative 2, negative 2. Okay, and then the second term is 0. So we put the 0 in, and you get 3 times 0 is 0, plus 4 is 4. So our ordered pair is 0, comma 4. And for our last term, we have a 1, and it's going to go right here in the 3x, the x slot, which is 3 times 1, plus 4. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 4 is 7. So our ordered pair here is 1, comma 7. So now we want to graph it. So let's see how we can do this. So it looks like we have a positive 7 on the x, on the y-axis, and we go down to a negative 2. So if I go 1, 2, here's my negative 2, and I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and I'll go to 8. You try to keep them so that they're evenly spaced the best you can. So that's our y our, our y terms, or our dependent variables. And for our independent variables, we go from negative 2, there's negative 2 right here, and up to 1. Right there's 1. So now we can plot them. So the first one is negative 2, 2. And here's negative 2, negative 2. Right here. I'm going to, let me change colors. Let me make it orange. Negative 2, 2. Right there. Okay negative 2 comma negative 2 then the next one is 0 comma 4 here's 0 and it's plus 4 1 2 3 4 0 on the x-axis right here's 0 1 2 3 4 up positive in the y and that if i if i want to go ahead and write it it's going to be 0 comma 4 that's the ordered pair now the last one is 1 comma 7. So here's 1, we drew the 1, and 7 is 4, 5, 6, 7 right there. So it's out 1 and up 7. So let's say it's right about there. So I'm going to write over here, I'm going to say 1 comma 7. Okay, and you want to draw a straight line, which they want us to, is I'm going to try to draw a straight line. It's going to go down, not very straight. And if you work with me, you'll find out I get a lot of these little crooked lines, but hopefully you can imagine it being straight. Okay, and so there we are, we plotted them. So now you get an idea of the slope of the line. The slope is positive. Okay, okay. Okay, example two, this is our real world problem. Uh, they're going to tell us they want to give you a little information about real world problems here, which it makes good sense. And you should keep this in mind as you're looking at these types of problems. It says when you draw a graph for a real world situation, choose appropriate intervals. So that means look at your data so that when you graph it, it's the intervals kind of make sense to being able to plot all the points comfortably uh, on, on the S. So it says the intervals for the units on the axes. Be sure the intervals are equal. So draw all the spacings equal. If you need a straight line, if the spacings aren't equal, your line won't be straight. Okay, it'll have some curve to it. And not because I can't draw straight. It's because that's just the dots will make it crooked, okay? Also, if the data are all positive numbers, like in this case here, it's you see 0, 200, 400, 600, or you see 0, 500, 1,000, 1,500, they're all positive numbers. Okay, so um, it means keep it. They would, they say keep it all in the first coordinate, right? In the first coordinate of our coordinate system. And the first coordinate is right up here where you're in coordinate number one. That's Roman numeral number one, right here. We're in coordinate one. If you're over here on this side, you'd be in coordinate two. Down here, you'd be in three. And over here, you'd be in four, okay? Anyways, so let's go ahead and now do the problem. Suppose your group recorded a CD. Now you want to copy and sell it. 
the company charges $250 for making this master CD and designing the artwork for the cover. Okay, there is also a cost of $3 to burn each CD. The total cost P of C, okay, depends on the number of CDs being burned. Use the function rule 250 plus 3C and make a table of values to make the graph. So here, we're, they're using 100, 200, 300, and 500. Those are the values that they're using. And let's let's see how it turns out. So we take we've got the our our C values, which are the X values, which are also I guess would be considered the independent variable, right? So and our function that they want us to use is 250. That's the the upfront cost, so to speak, plus three dollars per CD. Okay. So if we do that, we're going to have. Hold on one second. So as we did in our previous slide, we're going to take and substitute in for our x value or our, or our c value at this point. So here it's 250 plus 3 times 100 is equal to 550. So in that case, our ordered pair is 100 comma 550. Then we put the 200 in. It's 250 plus 3 times 200, okay, which is 600 gives us 250 plus 600 is 850. That's our output, our dependent variable. So our ordered pair is 200 comma 850. Okay, and then 300 is our next input or independent variable. And it's 250 plus 3 times 300, which is 900. 250 and 900 is 1150. So 300 comma 1150. Is our ordered pair and then finally 500 is our last input so 250 plus 3 times 500 3 times 500 is 1500 plus 250 makes 1750 so 500 comma 1750 okay so now they want us to plot them so they pick some numbers that are in the range they're all nice even spacing so you can do some Imagining is to where that your point falls within that open space. And we're going to go ahead and do it. We have, for the X values, we have them right on the line. We have a 100, we have a 200, we have a 300, and we have a 500. And they all fit the line perfectly. So now that we can get, do that, we can plot them. The first one is 100, 550. 100 is right here, right here, 550. So it's a little bit above the 500. We'll call it 550. Then we go to the 200, 200 and comma 850. What is that you see here? 750 is at the line. So 850 is like two, uh, what, 40% through this? Okay. And then 300 gives us 1150. And now here, 1000, 1250, 1150 is right in here. And then finally, we have the 500. And it takes us all the way up to 1750. And 1750 does fall right on the line. So right there on that nice cross of those two, that intersection. Then you can draw the straight line. I'm going to not do it. It'll just kind of screw up the picture. But you get to see how it's plotted. If you want to pick one, what is an ordered pair? What is this ordered pair? This one is 200, 850, right? That's the ordered pair for this dot right there. And these are so small, it's hard for me to write. So I'm not going to write any more on there. So let's go do the next one. It's going to have the same type of problem. But remember, this is $250 and $3 per CD. The one you're going to do on your own has got a little bit of difference. But let's take a look at it. OK, on example two, check your understanding. It says, Another company charges $300 for making the master CD and designing the artwork. It charges $2.50 for burning each CD. Use the function rule. There it is, our function rule. P 
p of c right here p of c is equal to 300 plus two dollars and fifty cents times the number of cds times c so now we better we're going to fill in our table so i'm going to change my color okay so filling in our table let's pick what we did last time it's we've got four values so let's do it so we have 100 we had 200 we have 300 and we have 500 and here's our function rule right here p of c is 300 and 250 per cd so we're going to write p of c is equal to 300 plus 250 2.5 not 250 but two dollars and 50 cents but 2.5 times 100 replace the c with your input value so 2.5 is 250 right 300 and 250 that equals 550. okay and over here this would be 100 comma 550. okay now our 200 e i'll just do the equals equals 300 plus two dollars and fifty cents per cd times 200 cds and that equals what two times 200 times two is 400 a half of 200 is 100 so this is 300 plus 300 right so it's excuse me it's 400 it's 400 500 plus 300 is 800 sorry 800 and the ordered pair there is 200 comma 800. So our next input equals 300 plus 2.5 times 300. And that equals what? So two times three is six and a half of three is one and a half. So it's seven and a half plus 300 is 1,050. Okay, so on this one, we have 300 comma 1050. And then lastly, we have 300 plus 2.5 times 500. And that equals what? Two times five is a thousand. A half of five hundred is two fifty. So there's twelve fifty plus three hundred is fifteen fifty. So here our ordered pair is five hundred, comma, fifteen fifty. Okay. So now we're going to plot it. So now again, these are all positive numbers. So we're in the first coordinate. Oh, I should change colors on that because you don't see it. We're in the first coordinate right here. One, coordinate one. Okay. So let's let's go ahead and plot these. So the first one is let's oh first let's draw it all. So we got 100, 200, 300, 400, 5. I tried to keep the spacing even. I'll draw an extra one. 600. I'm gonna put a five here because that's the five a one, a two, and a three. These are all hundreds, okay? And then I'll, I'll, I'll do the hundred on the 500, 300, 200, 100, okay? Now this one we're gonna do, we can do the same thing as we did before, 250s, right? So 250, 500, 750, 1,000, 1250, 1500, 1750. Okay, so each of these is 250, so 250, 500, 750, and 1000, and then 1250, and 1500. Finally, 1750. 
So let's plot them. We have 100 right here. And I'm going to change colors. Let's do red. So we're going to do here's 100. Didn't change. Do it again. There we go. 100 and 550. So 550 is just a little bit above about 20% of this spacing here, right? So it's about right there, one notch up. So it's going to be right here. There's that first one. And then the next one's 200, 800, 200, 800 is here's a thousand. 750, 800's right here. 200, right about there. Okay, then 300 and 1050. 300 going up. Here's 1050 right here. Right about right about there. Try, trying to get the dots to make as straight a line as I can. And then the last one is 500 and 1550. So 500 and 1550 is right up here and 500 is right about there. Okay, so now if you drew a straight line through it, you see it does make kind of a straight line, doesn't it? This is a linear function. 300 plus 2.5 times c is a linear function. And that's showing you it's a line. Okay, so there it is. If you want to plot one of these um, ordered pairs, Let's do this one right here, the third one, which was 300, 1050. So it's 300, comma, 1050. That's the x value and the y value. If this is the x axis and the y axis, or these are, you know, the c values and these are the p of c values. Okay, so there you are. Now, the part two here, it's got a little bit of something for you to think about. Compare your graph from part A, that's this on this sheet, to the graph on example two on the previous slide. For what number of CDs is this, the CD going to be less expensive if you choose that, that function and rule, okay? So the only thing you can do is try some examples, okay? Because you want, or you could... You have to try to write the equation a couple times and figure out what's going to happen. But if you, I'm going to start with 100. So if I put 100 in here, 100, I'm going to get 550. Okay, because it's 300 plus 250 dollars because of the price per CD. So in this case, each CD is two and a half dollars. On the previous one, it was 250 dollars plus three dollars times 100 it's still going to give us 550 so these are both equal to each other the 550 from both so we know that that right there they're equal so now all i have to do is go backwards just one cd and see or keep going backwards till we find out which is cheaper so what we're going to find out is if we did one less cd on here from the from the previous slide that would be 250 plus what, three times 99? Okay, so that's gonna be 200 and, what, 297? So 250 and 297 is gonna be 547. And if you could do the other one up here, this this one up here, you're gonna find out that this is gonna be, um, 500 because now it's 99 times 2.5 so it's two dollars and fifty cents less than 550 which is going to be 547.50 five four seven point five this is more money it's 50 cents more money for this one than the one on the previous slide because the one on the previous slide is going to give us 547 not the 547.5 so the answer to this has to be the previous slide so you have to have less than a, anything time you go less than 100, less than 100 CDs, the previous slide or example two will be cheaper. For what number of CDs is example two less expensive? Okay, example three, graphing functions. So now we're gonna 
look at some special cases and how the graph might look different. Up till now, we've looked at just a linear function. Our function rule was that of a line, and you saw a line. But now you're going to see something different. As you see right here on this slide, as you look at it, you see a V, so to speak, right? So it's already not a line, it's two lines. But our function rule gives us two lines. So let's let's look at it. Let's read it and then work through it, okay? So some functions have graphs that are not a, not straight lines. You can graph a function as long as you know the rule. After you have graphed the ordered pairs that you have calculated from a rule, you can join the points with a smooth line or a curve. So what they're talking about is you can connect the points, and depending if you know what it's going to look like, you're either going to get a nice smooth curve, hopefully, or a straight line, but we'll see how that works out. So in this particular case, the first one, we're going to graph the function, the function rule, y is equal to the absolute value, absolute value of x plus 1. Make a table and graph the values. So they've picked five, six, well, five numbers. So we have our inputs, our independent variable, our x values, okay, our negative 3, negative 1, I'm going to change colors here, negative 3, negative 1, 0, 1, and 3. And when you put these into our absolute value function here, the absolute value, you get the first one, you get negative 3, the absolute value of negative 3 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. So our ordered pair is negative 3, comma, 4. How about negative 1? Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. So our ordered pair is negative 1, comma, 2. Our input and our output. Okay? Input, 0. Absolute value 0 is 0. Plus 1 is 1. 0, comma, 1. Input and output. Independent, dependent. Then the 1. 1. Absolute value of 1 is 1. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2. 1, comma, 2. Input 1. Output 2. Now the last one is the absolute value of 3, which is 3 plus 1 is 4. So our x is 3. Our y is 4. Our independent variable is 3. Our dependent variable is 4. So we have 3, comma, 4. x, comma, y. Okay, and now we're going to draw them. So what they want you to do is you have to plot these. So starting in the middle, we'll go with the zero because the zero is right here. Here's the zero, and we're going to do what? We're going to take, put it into our function rule, and we're going to come up with an answer of one. So when x is zero, y is one. There it is, right in the bottom of this V. It's like the starting place, right? In fact, it is the starting place, if you will. Then if you just do a positive one, you go to the positive one, it says your answer is 2. So from here, it's 1, 2. So here's that one. And then the negative 1, negative 1, the absolute value of negative 1 plus 1 is 2. So now we go negative 1 on the x, and you go up 2. So they're mirroring each other. And guess what? When you pick this 3 value, it's going to be a 4, 3, comma 4, or negative 3, comma 4. So here's the negative 3, comma, 4, and here's the positive 3, comma, 4. Okay? Let's look at another one. Okay, now on this one, it's the function rule is x squared plus 1. And as you see, now it's making a parabola. You see this curve line. So when you draw this out, you're going to kind of have to do the best you can drawing a curve line. So. What is the function again? It's f of x. The function rule f of x is x squared plus 1. So here's our function. Here's the x value. Negative 2 is our x value. And negative 2 squared is 4. Plus 1 is 5. So it's negative 2, 5. How about negative 1? Negative 1 squared is 1. Plus 1 is 2. Negative 1 is the input or the independent variable. 2 is the output, the y value, uh, the dependent variable. Okay, 0 independent, 
0 plus 1 is 1, 1 is the output, 0 and 1. It, de independent, dependent, x and y. How about 1? 1 squared, it's the same as before. 1 squared is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. 1 input, 2 output. 2 is the input. 2 squared is 4, plus 1 is 5, the output. 2 comma 5. So now we plot them. How about the 0? Go right to the middle, the 0 1, and it's 0 1. So we're going to go right here, and it's this one right here. This is just like the absolute value, except it's curved lines. It's a different function, but it's starting in the same place, 0 comma 1. So now you pick negative 1, you go to the left 1, right here, negative 1, you're going to go up 2. And there it is, negative 1, 2. If you do the positive 1, you're going to go positive 1 and up 2. And as you see, it mirrored it. Here's the mirror right here. This one mirrors this one. Okay? So here, this one here is 2. Negative 2 gives us a 5. Here it is, negative 2, 5, right there. And you can just mirror the other one right there, because now it's positive 2. We're down here at the bottom, positive 2. Five way up there. Okay. Okay. Now it's your turn. Make a table of values and graph each function. They're giving you the functions, and they're um. They should be pretty straightforward. So, but let's go ahead and see what it does. Okay. It's going to change this the way this looks, but not a whole lot. Let's see what it does. So we're going to pick some values. So let's do. It says four values, right? So let's do negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And I'll do it for both of them. Negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So we've got the inputs for both of our functions. It's the same thing. Absolute value of x, negative 1 this time, not positive 1. Not plus 1, but not minus 1. So we're going to put in for the value here, we're going to say f of x, f of x is equal to the absolute value of negative 1 minus 1. And that is equal to what? Absolute value of 1, of negative 1 is 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. So our chord, our x, I mean our ordered pair here is 0. Oh, no, sorry, I'm on the wrong line, is 1, negative 1, negative 1, comma, 0. Next, equals absolute value of 0. The absolute value of 0 is 0, minus 1 is equal to minus 1, 0, comma, minus 1. How about, now we're going to use the 1. The absolute value of 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So we're going to have 1 comma 0. And finally, we're going to have equals 2. The absolute value of 2 is 2 minus 1. 2 minus 1 is going to give us 1, right? And so that's going to be 2 comma 1. That's that one. So let's plot these on the graph. Starting, I always like to start at zero, if, you, if it makes sense. In this case, it does. Here's the zero. And we're going to start, when it's zero, what is it? It's Here's negative one down here. Negative one right there. That's the first one. Then we go negative one and zero. So here's, I'm going to call this negative one, negative two, positive one, positive two. Well, negative 1 and 0. That's, uh, excuse me, 0. Now the next one, oh, we're doing the top one. Negative 1 and 0. Negative 1 and 0. At the y value, this is 1, 2. This is negative 1 right there. So it's 1 and it's negative 1 right there, right? Negative 1 in the x and it's, oh, excuse me, negative 1 on the x and 0 on the y. So negative right here. I should probably change colors. How about that one right there? Does that make sense? No, not really. Let me erase it. That color doesn't work good. 
when you're doing the um let's do gold with the black background so i'm just going to draw that line there i would say here's that dot here's the dot that we started with and then the next one is x1 y0 x1 y0 right here it looks almost the same as the previous slide doesn't it? the v right here and we have one more point two comma one so here's two and we're going to be up here at one right here two two comma one right there okay so um that's those plotted out so what is this going to do this is going to be a let's do the other one let's do one more let's do negative two we can't fit it in but negative two which is a two minus one two minus one is also two uh, excuse me is also one rather so that would be um negative two one so if you try to draw this it's going to be let's see if we can this is going to be the absolute value it's going to be right here straight line going out here and right here straight line going out here okay our v that we had before it's a little different shape. I added this extra point to, but just to help visualize it. I put that dot out there just so that you could see that we we're going to have a dot right there too. So now let's do the x squared or the quadratic, we call them. So now we're going to have, I'm going to go back to uh, red I was using. So I'm going to go y is equal to x squared, which is what? Which is minus 1 squared minus one and that equals one squared is minus one squared is one minus one is zero so it's minus one comma zero next i have a zero so zero squared minus one is equal to minus one zero squared is zero so over here now i have zero comma minus one let's do the one equals one squared minus one one squared is one minus one is equal to zero so the answer here is one comma zero and then finally we have the two two squared two squared equal minus one is equal to four minus one is three so now this one is two comma three. So let's see if we can plot this. We have the zero right here. We have zero, we have negative. Here's zero, the zero. I'm gonna use this gold like I did up, up here. Well, let me draw the graph out first with the red. So I'm gonna have zero. I'm gonna have a one, two, three, one, two, three one two three and one two three trying to keep them evenly spaced first is zero minus one so it's now, now i'm going to gold zero minus one is right here that's this one right right here okay the second one then we have negative one x gives us zero so when you go negative one and y is zero so here it is and then when you do positive one, it's zero. So that's this one right here. And then this one here shows that it's when it's two, it's three. So when you do one, two, it's a positive three. One, two, and it's three. One, two, three. Well, if you can mirror on two over here, you can get the three right there. How's that? This is negative two, three. This is three up here. So now this is going to look like that other graph because it's going to be like a curve graph. Like that. How's that? Not too bad. If you wanted to put that coordinate in there, what is that coordinate? That was the one that's over here is two comma three. Two comma three. So if your teacher asks you to Identify each point with its 
ordered pair, this would be the ordered pair, the two comma three, the x value and the y value, the input and the output, the independent variable and the dependent variable. Okay, I think you've got it. And we're done with this lesson.